I'm making as much of the case as I possibly can from one eighth inch thick aluminum. That's what I'm cutting right here. And I'm rough cutting it with the circular saw and the straight edge guide so that I can get pieces that are more manageable to cut on the table saw. A lot of guys that work with aluminum compare it to wood, you know, cutting it with the same tools as long as they're carbide tipped. And that's kind of true, but there isn't any wood that's as hard as aluminum. So you really have to keep that in mind. The other thing about aluminum is that it's sticky. It sticks to the blade. It sticks to the teeth. And that makes it especially dangerous for a kickback. And the other thing that aluminum does is it leaves burrs on the edge that you really need to get rid of. Because the last thing you want is this hanging up while you're trying to push it through a cut. While you can use regular carbide blades to cut aluminum, I really recommend getting a metal cutting blade. And the biggest difference is that the teeth are at a different angle when they're cutting through the metal. Flatter and not so hooked. I also like to lubricate the blade in some way and that'll make it cut smoother. Here I'm rubbing in some Vaseline. Now I'm ready for my cup, but when I put it down, I notice that the corner must be dented or something because it's snagging. And this goes back to the burrs I was talking about before. You really want to get rid of anything that's going to hang it up as you're pushing it through the cut. So I got rid of that and now I can send it through. And what I'm doing here is I'm just making a cleaner cut to replace the one that I made with the circular saw, that rough cut. And you can see that I'm taking my time. I'm pushing this through evenly and slowly making sure that I never let go of it. Now I'm comfortable making this cut on the table saw with the fence because of the size of the piece. It's big enough that it would be difficult for the blade to kick it back. But on anything smaller, I'm gonna to switch to a sled instead or back to the circular saw again. And the other big difference between aluminum and wood is that you gotta be cleaning up these chips constantly. Otherwise they're gonna make scratches in the aluminum and they're gonna be hard to get rid of. Here I'm making another cut with the circular saw. That's to get this piece down to a size where I can use it on my crosscut sled. And like I said, whenever I'm working with smaller pieces of aluminum, I always want to make those cuts using a sled. Here's another short crosscut using my mini table saw sled. A lot of guys will use a miter saw for this, but it's a lot safer doing it this way on the table saw. Now what I'm doing here is I'm making dados in the bottom panel and that's for dividers that will go in. So I've got the blade set to cut about halfway into the material and I'll make two cuts so that I get it to the right width. I'm doing this because I want to drive the screws in to the edge of this without adding any clips or brackets. And I had kind of an interesting idea on how to do that. And it starts with this dado and the divider fitting in it and then I'll make cuts where I want the screws to go. And I think that I can drive screws in there if I use a clamp to make sure that the screw goes in straight and doesn't come out through the side. Then I can line up that divider exactly where it needs to go and use it as the template to drill the holes through the bottom panel for the screws to go through. And so that worked out really well. And the next thing I need to do is put on the heat sinks that I have. These are old slot A heat sinks that were surplus. I bought about 10 of these way back for around $4 each thinking that you know at some point in the future I could use them and here it is probably more than 12 years later and I'm using eight of them on this amplifier. I'm fastening these with a single screw in the middle and I'm also using polyurethane construction adhesive to glue them in place and fill up any gap that might be there so I'll get better heat transfer between these and the bottom plate.
Next, I can take the individual amplifier boards and mark out the holes that I need to drill for the screws that will hold the output transistors down to the bottom panel. And I designed this so that those would be as close as possible to those heat sinks. It's especially important after drilling the holes to deburr the edge of the hole so that it's not puckered up. The transistors need to be in good contact with that bottom plate to maximize heat transfer. I went out to my shed and I got an old piece of aluminum angle. I'm going to cut that into brackets that I can use uh, to fasten the front and the back panels, plus the sides and also the top. And once again, I'm cutting those with my mini table saw sled and I'm waiting until the blade stops before I take the piece away. And I think the takeaway from this should be that whatever respect that you're paying to wood while you're working with that, cutting that, you should probably double it plus some for aluminum when you're trying to use these same tools to work with that. I carefully laid out where the clips go and I'm fastening those with screws again. And I should mention that the screws that I'm using are metal screws but they're not fine thread, they're coarse thread. I found that, especially in aluminum, soft aluminum like this, they grip really well and they never let go. I salvaged these feet from an old receiver, but I later replaced these with something that looks a little bit better. One of the things that I want to do here is to make sure that I have all of the holes drilled for all of the parts that I need to mount before I paint this. And I really don't want to be working on it, like, you know, drilling holes after that happens. I made this bracket that holds the capacitors down from that same aluminum, just bent it on the end so it you know, hugs the capacitors. So that's basically the bottom done, and now I need to work on the top. And the top needs vent holes, and I want to do something special there, so I designed something and used the CNC to cut it out. It took a while, and I had some problems, but in the end, I think it really turned out nice. This is raw aluminum, and it doesn't have any finish, like it's not anodized or anything, and that's okay if you want to paint it. But if you want to leave it natural, you have to do something with it. So I'm taking my random orbit sander here, and I'm going over the entire surface to try to give it an even a kind of frosted look. I did a little bit of that to see how it was looking. But before I go too far with it, I have to bend this into that U shape so that it fits down over what I've already built. And if I had my time back, I would have done this part before I actually finished the base so that I could size the base to fit this rather than trying to bend this to fit on what's already made. And to complicate it even further, I didn't want a sharp 90 degree bend on the corner. I wanted to have it slightly rounded. So instead of one kerf cut or relief cut, I made two. So it would kind of 45 around the corner. And even with the relief cuts, this was still really hard to bend, especially the way that I was doing it here. And then kind of going through the back of your mind is that when you're pushing down on this to bend it, all of a sudden it breaks. And all of the work that you put into the top so far is basically in the trash, because then you have to start over again. And as usual, when you are almost done with something, you start to get good with it. So I made this bend the easy way using the long top for leverage. With that done, I drilled the mounting holes, two on each side for the screws that'll hold the cover on, and then I got back to completing that frosted finish I talked about before. I'm using a brand new 120 grit sanding disc, and I'm lightly going over the surface, I'm not pushing too hard, and I'm doing one side at a time, getting it as even as I possibly can, then I'll blow off any dust that might be there without touching it, and then I'm spraying on a single coat of clear lacquer to protect it. And then I can flip it over and do exactly the same thing again on the other side. 
And then for the top, I'm starting with the same disc that I use on the sides, but it's already pretty dull, so I switched out to a new disc to give it one last pass. And that's the hardest parts of the case done. The only thing left are the front and back panel, and they're a lot less complex than these.